the call was a Zoom call. I opened a call, and before I can even say hello, he starts to have tears in his eyes, and he says, "Karim, I need your help." Wow. Okay. Hey, hey, hey! It's your poker guy, and I am back with another podcast, and this time it's a mindset podcast. And what better to have the world's best mindset coach uh, join us on this podcast? Super happy to have Kareem Chelly from Austria joining in for this podcast, and uh, he has trained everyone. Um, just do a little bit of Hindi here. Up uh, India, me, koi bhi proko pros lelo. Uh, you can talk about Kunal Patni, up Lakshpal Singh lelo, Deepak Botra, jin ho ke bhi naam apne ne sunay hai. Jo crushers hai, they have taken mindset coaching with Kareem. Uh, so that is awesome. So, you can think about the level of expertise he has. And uh, I have a question for you: Is there anyone left who hasn't trained with you? <laughs> I'm sure there are some people left. Yeah, I'm sure there are some people left. Yeah, I think India has amazing people, and also not just amazing poker players or crushers that are crushing already, but future crushers. Yeah, so awesome, awesome, absolutely. And the energy is also excited. I'm super happy to have him. And uh, What I want to get into is before we start the podcast and talk about mindset and make it a little heavy, I want to know that uh, if you can tell us quickly about your journey, you know, in a brief way, you know, that how did you land up becoming a poker mindset coach? And for everyone watching, before that, he was a relationships and dating coach, and um, <laughs> and I am telling you that a lot of those single guys as well watching here, and they would love some of that advice as well. So Karim, if you can please take over and tell us your journey. Yeah. So back in the day when I had more hair than right now, yeah, <laughs> I was, I was, uh, yeah, a dating and relationship coach. You said it, and the reason why I became a dating and relationship coach is because I was extremely shy when I was younger. So for me, I knew that fighting my shyness, for or for fighting my shyness, I need to go to people and talk to them, and I said, okay. The easiest way to talk to people is to talk to girls because I'm interested in girls and I want to get their feedback. So of course, when you're shy and you start out, it's a little bit tricky. But I did this, and um, what I also what also helped is I went to seminars, right? Like dating seminars. I was listening to those speakers. They teach a lot about psychology and like how it works when you to people in general, yeah, not just girls, right. but people in general. How you're social and um, I learn a lot. And uh, I became very good friends with the people that organized the, those speeches. And uh, what happened was that um, someone got sick. Yeah, someone who had a speech got sick. And then the organizer said, "Okay, guys, like we only have two days, and someone got sick. Who can take that slot?" Yeah. And I said, "Yeah, maybe, maybe that's me." Right. I was nice. still a little bit shy back then, but they gave me a chance, and uh, I had my first speech then. And uh, after that speech, a guy came to me. He was twice my age. I was like twenty, twenty-one, and uh, he was in the mid, in his mid forties, right? And uh, he said to me, "Hey, man, like, do you coach?" And this was my very first client that I ever had. And I'm like, <laughs> "Oh wow, I don't, I don't know. Maybe I coach." And he's like, "How much do you charge?" Right? And I said, fifteen dollars per hour." Yeah, this was my like, just first imagine, ever. right? Right, right, right. First, fifteen dollars per hour, <laughs> and um, yeah, basically he was my first coach, and I did this for a while, and I think I be I became very, very good. Um, especially in the European market, there are a lot of people that I coach or I work with that know me from that uh, like old brand or old company. And um, what happened was I also had mentors always on my side. This is why I know that having someone that can guide you along a process is extremely important. And I was with him uh, going for dinner, and at at the dinner table, he said to me, "By the way, Karim, do you see the pattern in all of your clients?" And I said. Huh? How can all my clients have a pattern, right? They are from different countries. They speak different languages. How is that possible? And he said, "Yeah, it is possible because on the surface level, they think they have a problem with dating and relationships, but if you dig deeper, all the problems come from here, the mind, from their mindset." And that blew my mind because I think he was right. I no. I was not old enough or mature enough to see it back then. But this was basically one of the missing puzzle pieces. So what I did is I started to work more in the direction of personal development and psychology and stuff like that, and I switched my niche from working with people that are just interested in dating and relationships to business people. 
right? Yeah. So I help them with both things like dating and relationships, but also like mindset topics, yeah? And making the transformation very, very smoothly to just teaching mindset. And um, at one of my speeches, because I continue doing it, I met Ben CP from Raise Your Edge. Yeah, I'm sure oh, you know Oh man, him. who to meet yeah. exactly? Yeah. Okay, perfect, <laughs> right. Yeah, and uh, yeah, Ben was basically the guy who teached me poker. And through Ben and um, his course and like everything that he teached me, I became so good at poker quite fast. And I also fell in love with the game. It's an amazing, beautiful game that um, I had to make a decision because I knew I cannot become the best poker player if I still no. coach, but I cannot become the best coach if I still play poker. Right. But I loved both of these things. So I went to Ben and I said to him, Ben, what should I do? And by the way, are you still here because I lost you in a set? Oh, second. no. Okay, oh, okay, okay. Yeah, I'm okay. ready. I'm ready. I can hear okay, you. Okay, okay. So I went to Ben and I said to him, Ben, like, I love poker. I love, like, coaching people. What should I do? These are my two biggest passions. And I think I said to him, I think I have to go with one. Yeah, but it. it breaks my heart to, like, leave one of my passions behind. And I will never forget, he smiled at me and he said, Karim, you don't have to make that decision. Why don't you take those two things and just combine them. Wow. And then, of course, it was so obvious for me, but with, without Ben, I would not be able to see that. Yeah? Just taking my two biggest passions, combining it, and basically, I'm, I'm every day I'm living my passion. And that's why I'm so thankful to be here with you today and to have this chat. Oh, that's a beautiful story. I was so lost in your story. I was absorbing it. I'm just wondering because I also have kind of moved into poker and creating content around poker. So it's so relatable uh, for me. Uh, awesome, yeah. And uh, so that was your story. And today you are only focusing on poker mindset. Is that the thing or are you yet doing or business mindset coaching a little bit as well? Yeah, I mean, the, the it's not so easy to say. My main focus is obviously poker mindset, but I have business people. Yeah, Some, some Indian business people as well who work with oh, wow. me, who play poker on the side who want or who want to play poker full time. Yeah. Oh. But I also have some clients, like it always happens, yeah, that people come into my call and we talk about poker mindset and then they like, they lower their voice and they're like, um, I heard something. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah. what? You also teach dating, right? And I said, <laughs> yeah, it's not a secret. Yeah, it's a, what's going on? And he's like, yeah, but I would be interested in that as well. Is that possible? Like, of course, right? Okay. Of course. Yeah. Got it. Got it. Got it. I, I think yeah. you're going to get a lot of that as well. Uh, post yeah. this. Uh, yeah. uh, perfect. <laughs> I want to just establish uh, the importance of mindset in life normally like what does it do like if you whatever is your feeling about the, the term mindset what does it even mean you know and i've read a lot saying poker it's one strategy second bankroll and third mindset if you've got these three things sorted you're going to be winning so mm -hmm. poker and life what is the importance of mindset yeah let's start with poker first i sure. think the importance of mindset in poker is so important because just imagine, just in, in your mind, let's say there's a person who tilts quite heavily. Just think of how much money he's blowing away for, from tilting. Yeah. And by the way, this can be like the difference between someone who is a winning player and a losing player. Absolutely. Absolutely. So just eliminating tilt, for example can already switch you from a losing player to a winning player and have and becoming a full-time poker pro where you not just have enough money for yourself, an amazing lifestyle, but also for your family. Got it. Perfect. Right? right. Absolutely. And, and when we talk about life, mindset is so important because this is something that my first mentor told me when you, when you look back at the story, I was so focused on like the dating and relationship topic that I was like, Oh, how can I help guys to like be more confident and stuff like that. But I didn't realize that the best version of yourself is also the version who has the most amount of success in dating and relationships. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Absolutely. Right. 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 So, so if you work on yourself in general, this is when you not just master dating, but also poker and other topics of life. Got it. So it's a very overall thing where you kind of start doing well in all of your departments, basically. That's the way it kind of is, right? Yes, exactly. And it, this is the beautiful thing, right? Because a lot of people, they when they come to a mindset coach, they're like, mm, mindset, mm, I don't know, right? It's not tangible. Yeah? You cannot grab it. You cannot say like, oh, like how much more money will I make? Yeah, it's You True. will feel it, but you cannot really m measure it, right? Yeah, but just absolutely. imagine how much impact is it has on your life. Yeah, it's not just the money that goes up, 
but also everything else goes up. The confidence kind of jumps, right? I think the confidence is also a key factor, I think, there. Yeah. And I always talk to my clients about this. I said to, to, to them, why do you play poker? And at the end, what we figure out is because they want to be fulfilled or they want to be more happy. Correct. And that's when mindset work comes in. That's so obvious, right? Got it, got it, got yeah? it. Got so it's it. not just the money because yes, you make more money, but you use the money to buy things or do things that make you more happy. More happy. The end goal yeah. is different, right? The end goal is always the happiness yeah. piece, right? Yeah. Uh, who do you think in the world has the most powerful, like, you know, the mind or mindset, like, you know, personality traits, like say, uh, uh, Ronaldo. Or in India, if you follow cricket, I think Virat Kohli is someone who has a sharp, strong, uh, I, I think, there are a lot of belief in them. So according to you, like in your experience, who do you really look up to? Okay, this guy has a crazy mm -hmm. mindset. Yeah, so from the people I know, definitely Ben is one of the top, top oh, okay. tier. Yeah. Ben has an incredible, powerful mindset. Yeah, And um, from people that I don't know, I like a lot of UFC fighters. Yeah, I'm a very interested in like fighting sports. Okay. And uh, what like my end goal is to work with poker players and then transition at some point to work with fighters, professional fighters. That would be my my dream at some point. Oh, wow. And um, I think that's for them also extremely important. Yeah, they sometimes like if they win a fight, they have like um the option to like they have like a uh, like an extra extra bonus, right? A win bonus or something. Okay. And um, if they win a fight, they can have like plus one million or plus five million, depending, of course, right? Which which level the, of the of scale, yeah, the scale of the fight, yeah, yeah. Um, but I think these people need an extremely powerful mindset. And if you take a look at the UFC champions, for example, those people have an amazing mindset. Sure. Got it. Got it. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I I want to talk about a few things in poker, right? So there are different traits which impact your mindset, right? Uh, there are a lot of these traits. So it could be, so I have things like greediness, addiction, anger, arrogance, a tilt. All of these come and they impact your mindset and they're all related to poker. So I, what I want to do is take one by one and I, because there are people who are going to be watching who will relate to it. Uh, and I just, I want to get your take on what is the impact that this has and, and how do you actually work on solving it? I, or maybe it's such that you could answer all of it collectively as well. But mm -hmm. so if we take up firstly, uh, the greed side of things, you know, the greed side things that come into poker. How how does that really affect your mindset? And how how do people how does everyone behave? And how do you kind of uh, talk to those guys? You know, yeah. Mm -hmm. So greed in terms of like wanting to win more and chasing, of course, chasing the money, money, right? Only chasing yeah. the money. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. So greed is a very interesting topic because with greed it can have different sources. So right. one source is, for example. That I, I give you the, the worst case first, okay? Sure, sure. Worst case could be that you won once, yeah, once very big, and that give you that gave you so much dopamine and so much like good chemicals in your brain that you say, I want to feel like this again. Sure. So you get greedy and you just do everything to to have that feeling again. But that's positive, right? That's good. Isn't that good? Not if you chase like if, things, if you're doing right? the wrong because, things to get there. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Be, because what you want to do in poker is you want to stay calm and you want to make good decisions, not because you like chase highs or chase dopamine. Sure. Yeah. So you, you game should be the best way possible, right? So you play, you want to play in the best way possible, no matter what happened before or afterwards. Sure. Yeah? So this is one thing, right? So chasing money yeah, because of that high is never a good idea. Um, and getting greedy could also be because we compare ourselves with others. A lot of times when like, let, let's say we're best friends and I, I know that you made like a lot of money, but for example, I know I work harder than you, right? Then like, oh, like I have to like chase that and I also want to be successful. That sure. could also be a source of it. But it all comes back to one fundamental understanding of mindset, which is poker. First of all, you need to be patient. The only way to get successful is by being really patient and to take your time. Just Correct. because my best friend has success doesn't mean that I also have to have success. It's completely, completely unconnected. And the second thing is that if you show up every day and you perform as best as possible, this is the fastest way to success. It's not that you have one good day and this is when you become sure. successful. It's showing up consistently. Absolutely. Absolutely. Perfect. Okay. Uh, 
so let's talk about so i'm talking about these negative things be uh, and then we'll talk about ambition also but if i talk about the negative things uh, then there is uh, some level of anger and arrogance right that also happens uh, with do you see a lot of arrogance as well because you deal with players all across so does arrogance mm-hmm. also become a part or ego or overconfidence how does all of that come into play yeah e- ego especially overconfidence a little bit arrogance also a little bit yeah but ego would be the main topic here so how does ego impact the entire game how does how does that uh, you what do you see usually and what is your remedy to those players you know if they recognize that okay i am having that issue mm-hmm. let's start with like the dating example i think that's something i like to talk about a lot sure. um so when i was a dating coach i remember there are some guys coming to me and uh, because i also do public speaking right and sure. i saw those people sometimes i see them in the crowd and I feel the ego. They have such a big ah. ego that I feel it in the crowd without even talking wow. to them. Wow. Okay. They sit down, right? And then they're like, I'm just here to look. I don't <laughs> need that. Yeah. It's like, like I'm good with girls, right? Ah, ah, okay. I get it. Yeah. And for them to understand that it's not a shame to work on themselves. Yeah. Even if you're good. Yeah. You can always get better. Sure. There's one core principle in mindset, which is called lifelong learning yeah, or lifelong improvement. So you you never reach your full potential. It's a little bit of a paradox, right? You can, you can, I always say like, I help people to unlock the full potential, but in but, reality, yeah. you, you can never be there because you can always become better. Correct. All right. So when you see those people in the crowd and they're like, I don't need help with girls. I am good enough. Yeah. Talking to them and making them understand. Yeah, maybe you're good. That's okay. But you know deep down inside that you can be better, right? Better. Yeah, because everyone can be better, right? I'm yeah. a I'm a mindset coach, but I also know that I can also improve my mindset, right? Great. I can also become better. That's why I also have people that coach me, by the way. That was mm-hmm. my question for the end. I was gonna ask who coaches you, <laughs> but okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we will talk about this in a second. Um, because only by having high-level people around you, I think you can grow. Yeah. And those, my coaches also have coaches, just so you know, right? Right, right. So it's like an endless, an endless Absolutely, uh, absolutely, correct. Um, but what I wanted to say is talking to those people and making them understand that, for example, you can always improve is one of the, the ways to solve this. And sometimes the ego is so deeply rooted in their mind that it's really hard to crack that open yeah, and like open themselves up for new ideas or changes. Sure. And the reason why we learn this is because a lot of times, especially in relationship, um, in relationship psychology, is because we learn from our parents how we behave in, for example, relationships. So let's say our father also has that ego. Chances are pretty high that we have that ego too. Got it. If You'd we see our that. father and our father is like, you, your mom should do that, right? Like, mm, uh, like this. <laughs> I get if, it. It's chances are high that you are the you same. You imbibe that. Yeah. 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 So the, the first thing to ask yourself when, when someone is watching and asking themselves, do I have that ego? Ask yourself, first question, do you think you're better than everyone else or you don't need to improve yourself? And second of all, take a look at your parents. If, sure. For example, if your father has that big ego, what about you? Got it. Got it. Got it. Okay, interesting. So I think the first stage, like you're saying, is accepting it is a big, big, big part of the solving the remedy. Is, is that the yeah. thing? Yeah, so very good point. Um, the first thing to solve any issue in mindset, yeah, whatever the, the problem is, is awareness. It's always the first thing. So for example, if you have an alcohol problem, if you go to a rehab, the first thing they teach you is not to solve it. The first thing they teach you is that you're aware of the problem. Sure. Because a lot of people that go to rehab or get sent to rehab, uh, even if they like drink alcohol, like five liter alcohol every day, right? They're like, why am I here? I don't have a problem. Right, uh, right, right, right. So to solve any problem in the world uh, or any problem that you have with yourself, you need to be aware of it. Absolutely. Got it. Uh, so on the negative side, these were a few ones, I think. And all of them are, like you said, on the same lines. Uh, if we come to the positive side of uh, things that impact your mindset and again, on the negative side, actually, I want to cover addiction as well. So you get a lot of people. Do you get anyone with addiction who wants to kind of get away from the game? Does that also happen? You like stop playing poker? You yeah, mean? because they're saying I am addicted. I am losing and I don't I don't have the skills. I don't have the mindset. I am screwed in every way possible. 
uh, do mm-hmm. help me get out of this just that, it's it, that's more like a like you just mentioned the how you want to get a uh, get out of yeah. alcohol this thing Uh, yeah, those those people I usually reject just because I'm not a specialist in addiction, like like sure. I don't know solving addictions. Yeah, but I also can tell you that I had people that want to make a transition to something else because uh-huh. they don't enjoy playing poker anymore. Those people I help because I also work with business people. So making sure. a transition from poker to business. That's something I do also the other way around for business to poker. But if someone comes to me and said I'm addicted to gambling. Those people are usually sent to to someone else because I'm not a specialist in that topic. Absolutely, got it, got it. Okay, perfect. So on the positive side, there are people who believe in a lot in themselves, right? Like I, like like we mentioned Ronaldo and all those kind of people do believe a lot in them. And uh, what is the impact of that? And some people who are a little insecure on those lines, you know, they don't know that they can do it. They're poker players, they're crushing it, but they you don't have the confidence as yet in them. You know, some people who are underconfident and don't have that belief. Is there is that something also which you kind of look into and how important is that in a person's life like you know when mm-hmm. you're underconfident like i don't like, yeah prob like, yeah if you can go in with it yeah yeah so exactly the opposite of of what you just said one side is the overconfidence in the ego right? right the person who sits in the crowd and is like i'm already better than everyone else here yeah that right. overconfidence sure. the exact opposite is the underconfidence person correct i think i work with more people from that side to be honest right. yeah And I can also relate to those people a lot because I was there too. Okay. When when I started my journey, I was also like extremely shy, extremely shy. But so, you're probably getting the results. Those underconfident people are also finally doing getting the results, but they're just not sure that they don't have that strong belief in them. I know, I know, yeah, I, I know. It 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 really does matter. Sometimes, the, like high confidence people don't have the results, and they're high confident. Yeah? <laughs> okay. And then, and then the low low confidence people have results, and they're still not confident, right? So it's not right. really related to the results a lot of times. Sure. Okay. Because some of the issues we deal with, they come from our mind. So it, the results are not always connected to to the issue we are facing. Um. But for the un, unconfident people, first of all, we need awareness, right? Where does it come from? And then, second of all. getting the control back so because as you said it's a prime example the results not always connected to our mind and or to the issue that we are facing so we need to make the shift and get the control back so the question that I always ask my clients is what is something we can control to get our confidence back and the easy answer is performance if you know you played your absolute best game every session you you can only be confident Yeah, no. you cannot play better you played your best and i teach my clients how to do that how to bring themselves with like this yeah into a high performing state all the time Got it. and then they can play their best game and then they have more confident and the funny thing is that's an upward spiral right so when they play their best game they get they get more confident so no. they play better then they get more confident so that's they play magical. better Yeah, yeah, that then, is magic. Yeah, it's basically, just then my work is done, right? And then it's just like going up. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Okay, so one thing that I want to talk about is momentum. Okay, that also is a part of poker, and I and personally felt it as well. And I'm no crusher, but uh, there are times when I just uh, shift a tournament, and then there was a different kind of thing that next one week, you know. And I just thought, okay, I should really shift full time poker, and I think I'm on it. And that one week was amazing. and then of course there are months where you don't ship and then again when you do it your confidence level is next high so why is momentum so important because eventually if you're making decisions if you're getting those results why is momentum play such an important part mm-hmm. <clears throat> yeah, very good question this is also by the way why i think these are your later questions but i work with my clients only for a long period of time yeah multiple weeks and the reason is because we want to build momentum Wow. Okay. A lot of a lot of times is that when you get started, the first step is always the hardest. Yeah. When let let's say you're a very lazy person and you want to like build some habits, the first step is always the hardest. Sure. But once you let's say you want to go to the gym, but once you go to the gym like three days a week, yeah, and this is the moment where you realize, okay, I can do it. Yeah, we start yeah, with yeah. once per week, then twice per week, three times per week, and then you saw like, okay, once is easy, two times is easy, three times I can also do, maybe I can do four times, and then you're basically on the, on the way. Yeah, this is how you build the momentum. But momentum plays such a big role because once you are in that upward spiral, this is when you're basically unstoppable. Yeah, got it. And what what I also see is that a lot of people are in a negative spiral. 
Yeah, yeah. that can happen in a in a downswing, for example. Sure. Yeah, they're losing money. They don't know why. They like tilt easier, and then like everything is going down. Correct. So sometimes it's not starting with zero. Sometimes you start already negative. Correct. But turning this around and going from a negative to a positive spiral that can have a huge impact on yourself and your game. So that is something which you do kind of primarily do, right? Because this is one of the questions which someone has asked that the down the downswing part that if I'm on a downswing and it's going on for three to six months, it is so difficult to come back on the table and put up my A game, right? Because you're already on a downward spiral. How do you kind of tackle that? And that is what you're saying is the whole point is to turn it around and bring momentum in that entire domain. Exactly, exactly. And um, one of, of the things is as well control. Yeah, because there are a lot of things we can't control. In, so you're in saying this is general, under control. So you're saying this is under control. You can't control this. You cannot. No, no, no. What, what I want to say is there are a lot of things in poker in general you can't control. Ah. So you need to figure out which things you can control and you want to focus on them. Sure, sure. Yeah, and one of the things, as I said, is, for example, your routines, Correct. your performance. So you want to forget the, those things. I know it's easier said than done. Yeah, Forget the things you can't control and focus on the things you can control. Got it. Got it. Got it. Okay. Uh, what are the most extreme cases that you've handled or in terms of, you know, the, or like, because I don't know about tangible effects, but we'll discuss that also if you have like, you know, the impact side, but still, what are the extreme cases that you've done with poker players, be it from anywhere in the world? Yeah, I can tell you a, a cool story if you want. Uh, of course. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So... One of the most extreme examples that I ever experienced was um, a guy who filled out the application on my website and um, we basically scheduled a call and I knew him because like I worked with some friends of him. Yeah? Sure. So I know him a little bit, yeah, but not really, uh, really deep. So we come into the call. It was a Zoom call. I open a call and before I can even say hello, he starts to have tears in his eyes. And he says, Karim, I need your help. Wow. Okay. So I was like, okay, how can I help? And he's like, I destroyed my life. Okay. And I, and I said, okay, how did you? Like, this was like the five, 10 seconds, the first yeah. 10 seconds of the yeah, call, it's right? difficult, right, right. Yeah. yeah. And, and I said, how, how did you destroy your life? And he said, okay, so I will be very honest with you here. I said, yes. And he said, you know, I think I'm addicted to uh, cocaine. And because of that, I completely destroyed my life. And I said, okay, can you tell me a little bit more? And he said, the thing was that he, pl he plays a lot of poker. And what he realized is that obviously, yeah, the more poker you play, the more hands you play. And if you're a good poker player, you make more money. Very obviously, sure. right? Sure, sure. So he knows that he has to play a lot of poker. And one thing that helps is cocaine yeah and by the way when you hear that story do not take drugs yeah <laughs> it's because people are like good idea maybe i should try that yeah? he, want, he wants to okay he wanted to be more uh, uh, like in the thing so that i get it okay yeah yeah I'm, I'm just explaining what he told me right it's not that like take cocaine you can play more <laughs> poker yeah so um so he said okay cocaine helps me to play more poker and also to play more focused and um so he started to take a little bit in the beginning and then more and more and more because you also start to need more to have those sure. effects, right? And um, what happened to him was that he became very emotionally cold. And um, he was traveling around with his girlfriend. And um, on one day, he played life, a live tournament. And uh, he won the tournament for $30,000 or something like that. And um, he was completely on cocaine. So he come, it was like the casino was like in the hotel. He came upstairs and he was sitting down in the middle of the night. Like he came into the room, sitting down to the chair, opening his laptop. And his girlfriend was waking up because of the light of the laptop. And she's like, hey, honey, how was the tournament? And she's like, good. Not even turning around, right? He's like, good. And she's like, what happened? And he's like, I won it. She's like, oh my God, congratulations, right? And he's like, mm-hmm. And she's like, what do you do? Do you want to come here and cuddle? And he's like, no. And she's like, why not? So she's like, is everything okay? And he's like, yeah, I'm just playing a little more poker. It was like four or five in the morning. He just played like for eight hours. He wanted to continue. 
And she's like, yeah, but you already played many hours. Yeah, just come here and relax. And we make uh, oh. each other like a, a nice day tomorrow. And 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 he's turning around and starts shouting at her. He's like, shut up. You're getting on my nerves. I cannot focus. Don't irritate me. Yeah. And like screaming at her. And there were many instances where this happened before. So she started crying, packing her stuff. And she's like, it's over. I'm leaving. I cannot take this anymore. And then she went out. And sure. the funny thing was, because he was so much on the truck, he did not care. He, di he didn't even care. Yeah. He did not yeah. even realize. He continued to play for another seven, eight hours or, or something. Yeah. And then he was like thinking about taking another, <laughs> you know, another yeah, nose yeah. or going yeah. to bed. And he's decided to go to bed. And the next day he woke up and he realized, and he, and he realized fuck, my girlfriend is gone. And like, I played like online. I lost money. Yeah, not so much, but a little bit. Yeah. But uh, he realized, fuck, man, my life is, is like destroyed. Because what he realized was he can only, he, in his mind, right? He can only play good poker with the drug. But this, drugs make, this drug makes him cold. Yeah. And he like, he loves his girlfriend, but the girlfriend doesn't love him when he takes the drug. Uh -huh. So there's no chance to solve this on his own and he needs help. And that's why he's here. So he told me that story, like without me, like even like, I didn't say a lot yeah, in the first 20, 25 minutes. And I was like, wow. Okay. Thank you for sharing, sharing this with me. And of course we get started. Yeah? We got started. We started right away and um, we worked together for 10 weeks and uh, we solved that problem. Wow. Yeah, we, sol we solved the problem. He stopped taking drugs. He got his girlfriend back as well. Hey, yeah. nice. Yeah, of course, the dating uh, thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So he got his girlfriend back. He stopped taking drugs. And I think he also became more successful than he has before in poker. So that is one oh, of my wow. favorite stories and one of the biggest changes that I saw and my clients do. Interesting. Wow. Okay, nice. And so that's awesome. Uh, what I want to know is for a beginner. Okay, for mm -hmm. people who are, who are just into the game and they're not playing mid stakes also, but they're playing and they're losing and they're winning yeah. and they're playing and they're losing. Yeah. What is mindset for them? What are they? Are they supposed to do anything? Like the people who just yeah. started out, and I, when I mean just started, out, not like one month, two months. They've been playing for a year or two, but yet low stakes, cashing out some money, just living life with whatever money they make out of poker and going for it. What should they do? Yeah. So my honest opinion about someone who's starting out is that first you need to ask yourself. Do you have good strategy? Yeah. Because without good strategy, you can have the best mindset. You still lose in poker. Ah, got it. So step number one, ask yourself, how good is my strategy game? Do I need to work on that? Do I need to improve it? If the answer is yes, I need to improve it. Do this first. Don't touch any mindset stuff yet. Yeah? Got it. Got it. First, you need to play good poker. When someone comes into my call and he's like, I don't even know the ranges. Yeah. I tell him mindset work is not... It's not the right time for a mindset. Yeah? No, sure, sure. But if if someone says, Kareem, I'm confident, I play the ranges, I know what to do in which spot, but I cannot really make that shift of making consistent income or making Going more increasing money stakes. Or yeah. Moving up in stakes, exactly. What should I do? Then I think mindset is a good option. Understood, understood. So for people at that stage, firstly, get your poker strategy in place. Second step is your mindset, uh, is what Correct. you kind of want to grow, to get growth. Yes. Is how yes. you would put it. Yes, okay. because just to explain it also to the audience, for example, in the beginning, the differences can be very big. Someone who has good strategy will obviously beat the person who has not good strategy. Very obvious. Yeah, You clear, don't need to clear. be like a, a genius to understand that. <laughs> But the higher you come in poker, yeah, the, the higher stakes you play, the smaller the edges become in strategy terms. Sure. So the way to get your edge is by working on your mindset. Correct. Got it. Got it. Absolutely. Yeah, that's a, a very valid point, of course. And uh, so um, let's talk about your training, right? I want to do that a little bit because if people watching and for people mid stakes watching wanting to go to high stakes, what does the 10 week program consist of and how do you go about it? How does the entire piece happen? If you can please give us some details about it, yeah. and whatever the costing is, if you can just talk a little bit about it. Yeah. So to be transparent, there are many options, not just the 10 weeks, yeah? oh, Okay. but the, but the 10 weeks is the most common option. Okay. Because I think um, this is, I think the, the best option for most people, since 
we talk about the basics, right? Sure. And uh, it's I call it beginner program, but it's basically the, the basic fundamental program. Yeah. Oh, okay. And um, what we do in the program yeah, is we work on the three most important areas that you need to work on. The first one being mindset. So this is everything regarding Tilt, for example, having the right goal, structure and discipline would be one topic, overconfidence, underconfidence, yeah? A lot of things we mentioned today, that would be that first area. The second area is performance. So this is something that I also explained a little bit, which is having that emotional trigger, that's what I call it, positive emotional trigger, to bring you into a high-performing state. Sure. So you know how you play your best game all the time, always, yeah, with this but this is not uh-huh. mapped with results. No result. Like we don't talk about results. We talk about how do you bring the best version of your performance out? Is that the right? Yes. But the results will of course come with that. Correct. Correct. Uh-huh. Right, high, right. I always say high performance, high income, low performance, low income. Correct. Correct. Uh-huh. correct. So I teach you how to perform consistently on a high level. Mm-hmm. And then the third area is optimization. This is the life around poker. So it's about sports, nutrition, sleep, relationships. And what I do in those 10 weeks is we analyze your situation and we work on those things that you need the most but we need all three of them at least a little bit yeah yeah so this is basically um the the, the option the other ones we can talk about like individually but i think this is the the most common version or or option for most people and you do this over 10 weeks and this happens uh, like is, is it like weekly you connect once or how does that go yeah so what what i do with my clients is they have a success guarantee yeah which means the, the coaching is laid out for 10 weeks, but you all have the guarantee to solve the things that you told me in the beginning. So sure. if you have a tilt issue, you get the guarantee to solve those the, the wow. tilt in 10 weeks. And if you need longer, I coach you for free. Nice. Yeah. This is basically my guarantee that I give my clients. And I think this is why a lot of Indian high stakes players come to me because they know it gets solved, right? No matter mm-hmm. if it takes 10 weeks or 15 weeks or 12 it weeks. It gets whatever. solved. Yeah. yeah, but yeah. in most cases, 10 weeks is basically uh, the way to go. And on top of that, there's another big advantage because you don't have a, a maximum amount of time. Yeah, so you can talk to me 24 oh, seven. Okay. Yeah, so I, I always say I want to see you minimum once per week, but you get the time you need. Sure. So if you want to see me more often, you can do this. I also, also have clients who play live poker, for example, and then they like on the final table and they like go to the toilet, text me, hey, Karim, I'm on the final table. I'm nervous. What should I do? Calm me I down. Send them a voice. <laughs> yeah, I sent them a voice note and then they like have that confidence back to go to the table and boom, yeah, win the tournament. Wow, That's wow, wow. I see your stories. Yeah, you've got all these winners on your stories daily. Yeah. Perfect, perfect. And Okay. And the best way to kind of reach out would be on your site itself is where they can actually connect with you and get up, get a call as well, right? Is what I saw. So Yeah, I mean, it depends on the person. I, I, the easiest way to to reach me is the social media platform you use. Yeah. So ah. if you use Instagram, Facebook, you can reach me there. But of course, yeah, if someone doesn't have social media, I also have my website where you can just like go and basically fill out the application. Yeah, sure. awesome. One question that I have is how are... Uh, so this is probably the last couple of questions. After that, I have a few questions from the crowd that I told you about. It's fine. So, it's fine. Right. So one question that I have is, what is your take on Indian poker players? Like, how do you, how, how have they been? What is, like, whatever is your summary on them? Yeah. With Indian poker players, I see three things that I work with them. We work with nearly every one of them. Yeah. The first one is emotional control. So that could be most likely tilt, yeah? but tilt also have different forms. Tilt is not just anger, but tilt can also be, for example, overconfidence, underconfidence, right? There sure. are different emotions that come into play here or chasing wins that could also be a form of tilt yeah? if, if you analyze the situation. That's the first thing. Second one is structure and discipline, yeah? something that I think nearly every poker player deals with or can improve. But I, I, this is one of the most requested topics from the Indian poker players. And then also another topic is like fear and self-talk, the way you talk with yourself in your mind. That can be also uh, something that a lot of poker players want to improve in. Okay. Have you, because a lot of these poker players today are in the range of 23, 25, 27 years of age, if, if that is the case. And I see mm-hmm. a lot of crushers in India also at that age. Is there like, because they are, are they like raring to go? Do you see that quality as well, where people are like wanting to push in that extra 24-7 into poker only and the other domains of the work-life balance, like you said, be it discipline of 
exercise, sleeping, and you're just you're just like, no, I want to crush, crush, crush. Is that an issue you face as well with people? And do you help them? So- kind sometimes of yes. Uh-huh. Sometimes yes, sometimes no. Yeah, I think I so both sides. On I have people that really like they're so dedicated. Yeah, and like this is what I love in my coaching. They take like every word and basically use it. And I see like they huge they improve hugely week by week. But I also have other people that say like, mm, okay, yeah, like I'm successful, but I improve a little bit, which is also fine. Those people also get results. Sure. Yeah. But like, I think with mindset work, you have unlimited potential to get better. Yeah. So a lot of times, and it's also understandable. I also have very successful friends and it's, it's one of the most common things that I see successful people deal with that they have like a lot of money. They're very successful. And then they're like, why should I even care? Why should I improve? Yeah. Yeah. I'm basically set for life. And then they're like, Hmm. I'm doing a little bit of mindset work, but no, nah, yeah. <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. Okay. Yeah. Uh, before we move to the questions, my last question for you is a moral question, okay? Uh, it's a yeah. question which I ask myself as well many times. Um, so, and uh, I don't know if you ever faced this. It's uh, when you're in a sport which involves money and a ratio of, uh, say, 90% winners and 10% losers, right? Uh, sorry, 90% losers and 10 people who win, who make money. So you'll often mm-hmm. come across stories of people who who have probably lost a lot of money, probably gone bankrupt, borrowed, and now are not in a good state. Do you ever question yourself or do you ever get any poker player who questions the fact that, okay, I am kind of responsible in some manner to get these guys out of money? Does that ever happen? How do you see that point? Of course, yeah. I talk with this with some of my clients um, more often, actually, uh, in the last last time. yeah, Because... Like I work with people that play like super high stakes, right? Like high rollers, super high rollers and stuff like that. And those people, they make more money than they can ever spend. Yeah. And they have an amazing life, but they know their lifestyle comes because they beat other people or take away other uh, the, the money from other yes, people. Yes. Yes. So of course the question comes up is like, is that fair or should I do that? Yeah, And of course, th- that could be like an a individual <laughs> topic for another podcast. But to summarize my opinion, I think everyone has the decision to play poker or not. And obviously, if you play poker, I always say the person who plays better or makes better decisions wins money. Correct. So if you decide to play poker you also want to work on your game most likely of course you can also say i'm playing for fun but it's also fine right but then you cannot com- like complain about losing money if you say i'm just doing it to to like entertain myself it's okay yeah but i think those people who take it serious and who want to become a winning player there's so much free content out there probably right. more than you can ever watch yeah if you absolutely type in youtube yeah, not just in terms of mindset, but also in terms of strategy. So the options is there, the options are there. But it's the responsibility from every individual to put in the effort. If you don't put in the effort, you cannot complain. If you put in the effort and you don't get results and you have good strategy game, you should maybe contact. Yeah. <laughs> that was a good plug in there. No, fair enough. Okay. So I put out on a Discord channel, you know, that, okay, I'm doing this podcast and we had uh, the best in the country actually put down a lot of questions. Uh, we'll cover only a few of them now. Um, and um, so for the, the rest, we'll ask them to contact. So uh, one thing is how to make mistakes and not get tilted when making one. It's a basic one. I'm sure which everyone would have. Yeah. Um, yeah. How to make mistakes and then not get tilted when making one. Yeah. So this is mistake tilt. This is how it's called. Yeah. And, uh, I, I cannot like go in so much into detail, but one of the things that ha- are happening in, in, in or is happening in your brain is that we don't like negative feedback or instant negative feedback in terms of a mistake. Yeah? No. So what happens is that your brain starts to question yourself. Why did you do this? How can you improve and stuff like that? And there are certain methods that you can use to shift that thinking and put it at the end of your session. Because basically what you want to do is you want to tell your brain, yes, I know this was a mistake or it could be, sometimes we don't even know, right? It could be a mistake, but I don't want to wonder about it right now. Right now. I'm doing it after the session yeah, or the next day when you analyze the hand and you quiet down your brain. 
and you want to be focused. Because what happens is that if you start wondering and asking yourself, was this a mistake or what should I do better? You take away the focus. And it's not oh. that you just, you're not just tilt that you also lose focus. It's both. Correct, 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 correct. And this is basically when other people ha- get like a bigger edge against you because you're not focused and you're tilted. And that's a very, uh, yeah, crazy So you focus on actually uh, stopping this wandering of the brain and questioning the yes. mistake. And you kind yes. of say that, how do you teach them how to delay it till the end? Yes. Yes. Awesome. Yes, yes. So there's one more question on similar lines that after I lose a stack due to some mistake, I tend to force unnecessary moves to build back that big stack, which I had. And what can be the underlying issue behind that? So is it similar to what you just said? Can you repeat the question? I think I lost you for a second. No worries. So after uh, after losing some stack, I had a big yeah. stack. I lost some stack. And because I lost some stack out of it, I force unnecessary moves to ah, bring okay. back my stack. To bring yeah. back my stack. So what is the underlying issue behind this? Mm-hmm. Yeah. The, the funny thing is that this could also be a form of tilt. Just so you know. Okay. And um, we want to understand which form of tilt is it. But like, it sounds to me like a form of tilt. Of course, if that would be my client, I would analyze the situation, why and, and so on and get more information. But one thing that I can tell you is here in the front, we have the prefrontal cortex. And the prefrontal cortex is responsible for impulse, yeah? okay. impulse, in the impulse control. And to train the impulse control, there are a few things that we can do. One of the things, for example, is meditation. Okay. So if you have high impulse control, you can stop yourself from doing or making stupid moves. Of course, that is just a very simple answer. I need to have a little bit more context to give a a good answer. It could also be like tilt things that we can can use or tilt techniques we can use. But most likely it's the- Impulse control is what you're saying is the- Impulse control, yeah. Absolutely. Okay, some tips for building a good routine and becoming disciplined off the tables. Mm-hmm. Um, first of all, having a goal, you, you want to know what you want to work on. Yeah? Because a lot of times when I say like, <laughs> I, I talk to, to my clients and I said like in the, in the beginning, do you have goals set for yourself? Do you have goals as a poker player? Yeah, I want to study more. I want to become a better poker player. These are not goals. Yeah. Study more. Is it one hour more, three hours more, five hours more? Sure. sure. In which time frame? In a week, in a month, in a year? Yeah. Define. Become become a better poker player. What does this mean? Yeah. It's this, these are not real goals that you you should have. Yeah. You want sure. to be more specific. And uh, so first you should have a specific goal. And then you should like analyze how can I get there. So if you say, I want to get fitter, I want to like build more muscles, yeah, then ask yourself, okay, how? And then maybe you say, I want to go to the gym. And then you start building habits in a very simple way. Ask yourself, what can I do when I'm really busy? So maybe you can go to the gym once a week when you're very busy. So you start with once. And then you do it maybe twice when you're ready. And then three times and so on and so forth. This is how you build a habit. Or yeah, even easier, you have someone that holds you accountable. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> but but this can become counterintuitive as well, right? Because if you have a goal that I want to uh, make, $5 million this year. Okay. And yeah. then what happens is your people, and I've seen a lot of these people who say we are not result oriented, you know, that's the uh, the thing, right? That I'm not focusing on results. I'm just going to trust the process. And if that is the case, does that kind of come in the way between your goal and your mindset? Does that happen? That if you set yeah, a goal? I mean, in general, you should not have monetary goals because that's ah. not, not something you should, or not, not something you can control. Uh-huh. Yeah. Monetary goals is, are always dangerous to have. Yeah, sure. they usually lead to to not the best feelings because, as an example, let's say you want to make hundred thousand dollars in a year. Sorry, I said five million. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, as an example, right? To make yeah, it yeah. more more realistic. Yeah. Right, right. And let's say you play a, like you you play a satellite. You basically play a very big tournament. You ship the tournament and you make hundred thousand. Yeah, the next day. What do you do for the rest of the year? You basically reach your yearly goal and then. Yeah, motivation yeah. usually dips and then like, oh, I reached my goal. And then they not build good momentum, they build negative momentum. Or right. in other words, yeah, let's say you work extremely hard through the year and you have at the end of the year, $99,000 in profit. You failed. So sure. you should not feel good. But 99000 in a year is amazing. Yeah, Right, right, so, right. But right. in theory, you should, like you, you failed in theory, right? Perfect, perfect. So don't have monetary yeah. goals. Okay, okay. Uh, yeah. 
how to manage mental conflict of not putting in enough efforts in poker with managing a life outside of poker so you yeah. feel guilty internally that okay i'm not putting in enough effort but you also want to have a life outside so mm-hmm. how do you manage that conflict tricky because we need good time management for this yeah and one of the things that i teach my clients as well is you want to feel 100% comfortable no matter what you do if you first you plan obviously and then when you play poker you play poker there's no room for feeling guilty or ashamed and yeah. when you're with friends or family you're there with them you're present and there's no like room for feeling guilty so you want to learn how you can be 100% present no matter what you do. Perfect. That comes, Perfect. planning is one of the key tools, but of course there's some mindset shifts that you have to go through to really feel okay with either being here or here because it's not beneficial for like both sides. If you're with your family and you think about poker, they cannot right. really enjoy the time and you can also not enjoy it. And if you play poker and you think about your family, you cannot perform best. Correct, correct, absolutely. So you're saying get rid yeah. of the mental conflict itself. That is the idea behind yes. what you're supposed to work yeah. towards. Planning plus mental conflict. Yeah, both. Got it. Last question. Uh, uh, learning to applying it. Uh, sorry, what I mean is I like the discipline. I I, I learn something, but I fail to apply it real time. Uh, I like the discipline for that. Is that like, is yeah whatever you can get it's some shares of insights <laughs> you mean you mean in terms of studying poker or what i guess do you mean exactly? yes yes i yeah. study something and but when it t- comes time to apply it real-time basis i, I don't mm-hmm. manage to kind of apply that yeah there's another question that's very related with this and another question is how much how much should i study right okay right and the answer is it doesn't matter how much you study it's how you study so when someone says, I'm studying so much, but I cannot bring it to the table. Wow, right. Hmm. Yeah. And it, like if you study 10 hours, but you do it in a wrong way, someone who studies two hours can already have more success. So learning how to learn is also one of the crucial factors that you need to master as, as a, a poker player. Got it. Got it. Awesome. Uh, I mean, I this could go on. Like I, when we had discussed about the podcast, we said we could do po- a podcast <laughs> part two, three, four today itself. Yeah. <laughs> so, and I'm kind of not even asking all the questions right now. So yeah, because I think for the rest, we will have everyone reach out to you itself. And uh, thank you so much, uh, Kareem. Um, yeah. I had a lot of fun and it's a whole different take. It's the first mindset podcast that I've done. So thank you so much for taking time out today. Awesome. Bro. Thank you. Thank you. And I want to say, if people like that podcast, of course, um, they can let you know or let me know and I'm super happy to have like a second part with like more fewer questions and um, yeah I just if I get good feedback I'm, I'm happy to be back how, how do we quantify the good feedback it's it's not tangible can I say that <laughs> yeah that's that, that's true let's let's see how, how much uh, comments and likes the YouTube video gets <laughs> okay let's, let, let's do that let's do that I'm gonna fill yeah. this up with that thank you so much Kareem and uh, I just want you to say something for the people uh, everyone in India all the poker players if your last uh, some advice that you can share with everyone yeah so my last advice is that you always believe in yourself yeah no matter where you are where you come from how old or young you are yeah there's always room to create your dream scenario your dream life you just have to believe in yourself and if you put the effort in consistently this is how you become successful yeah and if you cannot do it on your own there's not a shame to reach out to either me as a mindset coach